Hey everyone, it's Charlie here and in this video we're going to explain why 70% of students fail the select entry exam and what you can do to be a part of the 30% of students that actually succeed. And so whether you're looking to get into Melbourne High, McRobb, Nossel or Suzanne Corey, in this video we're going to explain what you can do to set yourself apart and give yourself the best chance of entrance into one of these schools. And so before we get into that a bit about me, I'm Charlie, I graduated from Melbourne High in 2015. I've been in the education space for more than five years. And of course, getting into Melbourne High, I've sat the exam, so I know what it's like to go through this process and how difficult it is to gain entrance into one of these schools. And so the question really is, why do most students fail this exam? And really, the logical thing is, every single year, there's about three to 4,000 students that sit to gain entrance into one of these four schools, Melbourne High, McRobb, Nossel, or Suzanne Corey. But from these three to 4,000 students, there's only around 1,000 places across these four schools. And so this essentially means because there's so much demand for these schools, because number one, they have very high median ATARs, they're often in the top five schools in the state, their median ATARs are typically around 95. There's so much demand to get into these schools, there's just more students applying than places available for these schools. So number one, that's one of the biggest reasons Obviously, number two, these schools do open you up to very good opportunities after high school as well. It's like if you look at the students in my year, most of them are now studying law, medicine, um, engineering, commerce, biomedicine, degrees that do require higher ATARs. Um, and then on top of that, you're just in an environment where you're around other high achieving students. And so that really pushes you up and forces you to raise your standards. And so obviously at a high level, the reason why more than 70% of students fail, it's just because there's only a small number of places available for these schools and so many students wanting to get in. But naturally that kind of brings up the question as to what separates the 70% who fail from the 30% who actually succeed? What do these high achievers, the ones who actually do get into these schools, what do they do differently? And having sort of been in the education space for a number of years now and having sat this exam myself and seen students who obviously all got in, but also over the last few years seeing students who didn't get in, I noticed a trend between students who did get in and the ones that didn't. And what I noticed is what happens to a lot of people is they'll start the select entry admissions process. Parents will start it by spending a bit of time understanding the process, understanding the exam, understanding how it works, watching videos like this to get a good understanding of the process. And the first thing a lot of people will do is they'll start getting their child to attend once two day workshops and giving them some practice questions and resources here and there for their child to work on. On so on some weekends, their child will go to these workshops, they'll go to one for one section, a few weeks later they'll go for another, and they'll be sent home from these workshops with some resources and a big book of resources, um, like questions, content, for them to work through after these workshops. And what often happens is a child goes home with these resources after one of these workshops. They feel pretty confident after the workshop, but because they're left with no structure, no guidance and no accountability after this workshop, preparing on their own alongside their school subjects without that sort of support that they're used to, a lot of students really struggle. And I've seen a lot of the students consistently who don't get in, they're the ones who they're left on their own. They just have some bunch of different resources. They've been to a different bunch of workshops. But they haven't been through they don't have a structured curriculum or a plan for how they're actually gonna phase and plan their preparation over time. And what often happens is it gets to a few weeks or a few months before their exam, these students panic, the parents panic, they hire a tutor for a few more random sessions to try and fill the gaps of where they haven't been able to prepare themselves. But ultimately because the exam is so difficult and because obviously these are some of the best schools in the state, people preparing for these exams, that a lot of the students who do get in, they do prepare very thoroughly and very properly. They just don't have a chance and this sort of unstructured preparation where they go without structure, without guidance and without support, they really struggle to do well and get in on this exam. And if you think about it, if your child used this type of preparation approach for their school subjects, if they attended a few workshops here and there throughout the year, if they were given some practice questions and a few books and they're left on their own to prepare for these school subjects rather than having a curriculum that they follow throughout the year, rather than having a teacher running them through this curriculum and rather than having regular tests and check-ins and feedback from the teachers to hold them accountable and feedback from the parent as well to keep them on track, they wouldn't do well in their school subjects. And so that's why one of the keys to preparing for these selective exams is just to treat it like another school subject. Make sure your child has the same structure, the same accountability, and the same guidance that they would have for a school subject at school. If you can give them that for this preparation, they're gonna have a huge advantage and be set up very well to be a part of the 30% who actually succeed. 
And so in short, what can you do to help your child excel on this exam? And there's really two key things which you wanna consider. One of them is ensuring your child starts preparing for the select entry exam very early. And so students who are guided by their parents to start early generally perform better. They experience far less stress as their study is more spread out. They can better balance it with the subjects that they're doing at school. And they ultimately have a far higher chance of getting into the high school of their choice compared to students who start later. What we've typically seen is that most year end students start preparing around nine months before their exam. And so if you wanna have the best chance um, of getting into these schools and your child wants to have the best possible preparation, typically we would recommend preparing at least nine months before the exam. So that's number one, preparing early. Number two is ensuring that your child, as I briefly mentioned before, has the same level of support, accountability, guidance and structure for their select entry exam preparation as they currently have for their school subjects. And really this makes sense that given that this select entry exam really makes or breaks your child's chance of getting into these schools. So if your child wants to get into any of these schools, for 85% of students, all they'll look at is just the performance on this exam. They don't look at school subjects, grades, they don't look at reports, they don't look at co-curricular achievements, they're just looking at this exam score. And that's why it makes it so important to study for this exam with the same level of consistency and accountability as you would for a school subject. And so if you think about it at school, your child has structure, they're always given a plan or curriculum for what they're gonna study over the year. They always have guidance, so they're guided through this plan or curriculum by an experienced teacher. They have accountability, so they're held accountable with constant testing, check-ins, and even parent-teacher interviews to ensure that they're staying on the right track. And so really, if you wanna provide your child with the best chance of getting into these schools, Melbourne High, McRobb, Nossel, or Suzanne Corey, then they'll just need the exact same things for their select entry exam preparation. And so really, if you wanna break it down, they'll need structure, they'll need a clear plan for how they're gonna master and learn the five different sections of the exam. They'll need guidance, so they'll need someone to guide them through the preparation process, helping them solve difficult problems and supporting them when they're stuck. And they'll also need accountability. So they'll need someone holding them accountable on a daily and weekly basis, making sure that they stay on the right track. And so really the key takeaway here is that if you wanna give your child the best chance of success, there's two things that you can do. The first one is obviously making sure they begin preparing early. So most serious students start preparing about nine months before the exam. So that's a good guide for when you want your child to start preparing if you wanna give them the best chance and to be on the same playing field as other top performing students who are probably gonna get in. And number two, you wanna ensure that your child has the same level of support that they'll get for a school subject for this preparation. So they will need a really good structure and curriculum to follow. They'll need accountability and they'll need guidance from some sort of teacher or tutor. And so really from here, there's two ways that you can provide this type of school level support to your child. Number one is you can help your child yourself. You can learn the concepts, teach your child and find all the resources. We will be posting more videos just like this one on here to help you as much as we can. The second option is to look for some sort of external support. One option is of course to do it with us. We offer a tutoring program where we will provide you and your child this type of school level support. We'll give them structure, accountability and guidance to maximize their chance of success. Our tutors, they're all extremely experienced and they typically have success rates between 80 to 90%. And on top of that, if your child doesn't succeed in getting into one of these four schools in their first year of preparing with us, we'll actually give them free tuition the next year to make sure that they do. And so if you're interested in learning more about our tutoring program, there's a link in the description where you can book a call with us to learn more about the program and how it works. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to our channel to get more free valuable content and good luck for the rest of your child's preparation.